So I hope my screen is visible to you. I'm sharing my slides. Thank you so much. Thank you. So let's go back to the slides. Yeah. So welcome everyone for this session. I am very excited to deliver a session on Safe Locker in Azure. And this service is known as eWord. And uh, thank you Stronger for uh, inviting me to deliver this session. And it's my pleasure to share my experience on eWord service with you all. I hope that you all are safe and doing well. So let's start our session. So I am Dr. Abhilasha Vyas and I'm working with CloudTech Technologies as business unit head and I'm managing cloud security and business intelligence vertical. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and I am very passionate in cloud technologies, learning the security in the area of how the things are secure in the cloud environment, how we can have a hybrid infrastructure where we can work, we can protect our resources, we can protect our data, we can govern the identities, we can provide protection to the identities. So my interest into these areas and because of that interest, I uh, cleared a couple of certifications to understand my knowledge so that I can help my clients, so that I can help my customers to understand these services. Uh, I also got a chance to uh, deliver sessions in various conferences and communities as well. And uh, I also got some recognitions from the communities and some organizations for contributing in the security field. And I'm always helping other women to come in the security area. And I'm part of a lot of technical communities where uh, I'm trying and I'm promoting women to come in the technical area and come into the lead positions. So that's all uh, about me. And uh, I have more than two decades of experience in this area. So let's start our discussion on this. Okay, so before jumping to cloud uh, evolved feature, let me take you to the white screen and let me discuss a few points with you. So the important point which I want to discuss is why we need a safe locker. What is the requirement of having a safe locker in the cloud environment? So we see that number of applications we are accessing, we are working on, right? So in these applications, always we need certain connections other services. We need certain connections with databases. So in that case, we have some connection strings. Now these connection strings are containing the username and password, the table name to access the specified database, for example, if you will take. So in that case, we are going to hard code the username and password in the entire code itself. Now, if someone is having access to that code, it's very easy to access the login credential. So again, this is a question mark to the security. So in that case, if we have a locker where we can keep our secrets stored in such a way that when we want to access that secret, we can have a access link, no need to provide the uh, entire credentials in the code itself. So we have that link and with the help of that link, we can access the locker. From there, we can get this information which we need for login and then we can access the specific database. Another situation is, let's say you have designed certain keys for encryption and decryption. So encryption and decryption generally used to provide the confidentiality. We want to give access to the data to the right person. In that case, whatever text we have, we want it to be visible to the people, those who are authorized for that. So what we are doing is when we are transmitting the information, when that information is reaching to someone or that information is at the rest, we want to encrypt that information. We want to give an extra layer of security to that information. So data at rest, in transit and in use. So in rest, transit and use, 
we want to prevent this information that no one else will be able to access or read this information. So in that case, we design certain keys with the help of which we will be encrypting the information and with the help of which we are decrypting the information. So we have public key and private key concepts. So I'm not going in that detail. But we also need a place where we can store these keys. So secrets which we have, we have seen that we have a place where we can store it. How we can store the secrets, how we can access the secret that I will show you with the help of Azure Portal. I'm just giving you an example that what all things we need to provide a security with a simple example. So first is secret. Another one is key. Whatever uh, algorithms you have, encryption techniques you have designed, you don't want your keys to be exposed. You want your keys to be imported. You want your keys to be there in the system, but you don't want anybody to be having the access to read the entire key. Then we can also have certain methods which we have designed to manage the system. These are known as cryptographic methods. Uh, and these methods are nothing but a certificate which we are issued. So this can be issued by a certified authority. This can be a self-signed certificate also. I will show you an example of the certificate also. But again, these things are very common to you. Some certificates are, we can expose publicly. Some certificates, we need to keep it as a private. Again, we need a place where we can keep the secrets, keys, and certificates. The same way we keep a locker in our family, in our house, where we are going to keep all the expensive things so that other people will not be having the access without our permission. Same way in the cloud, I've given the a few scenarios, a simple scenarios to relate with, where we need a place where we can keep our secrets, where we can keep our keys, where we can keep our certificates in a very safe manner, whenever we need, which service need the access to these secrets, keys, and certificates, we can give access to them. We can also give access to them based on the rollback access, based on the access policies. So we have those options to play with to provide a secure access to the different resources. Now let's start with the feature of Azure Key Vault. Before that, uh, just wanted to tell you one thing. Uh, for showing the certificate, let me share my screen once again. And I'll share in such a way that I will not be jumping between the different slides. Let me share my screen once again. I'm going to share my entire screen. I hope my screen is visible now. So, okay. So I'm not going to the portal right now. I want to show you the certificate. If you see this uh, lock, this lock shows for the HTTPS sites. If we go and check that if this connection is secure or not, we generally assume that if it is HTTPS, it is secure. And yes, it is secure. But how it is secure, we can go to the connection and we can see that we have the certificate which is coming over here. And we are viewing the certificate. We will get entire detail of the certificate. Who is certifying authority? Who is the good certifying authority? So these are the certificates which we have. So we want to keep these certificate in the safe place, we can export the certificates which are available. So this is up to us that what kind of certificates we are using for accessing the applications or providing the secure access. So just an example I wanted to give you. Now, moving towards the key vault, this is a portal for managing the resources, managing the entire access for the Azure Cloud. So I will take you to the slide one. So we started our discussion on the Azure Key Vault. So I've given a summary that we can keep our secrets, keys, and certificates in a safe locker. And that safe locker in the Azure is known as Azure Key Vault. So Azure Key Vault, we can say that it helps in uh, safeguarding the cryptographic keys and secrets which we have, which we can store. We also have control to maintain the access. As I told you, that we have RBAC, and we have access policies to manage the access. Now, 
for keys, we have different operations. Like we can uh, encrypt the information, we can decrypt the information. So I will show you those operations also on the portal. So the features of Key Vault, if we want to understand, the features of Key Vaults are tokens, passwords, certificates, API keys, and the other secrets which we can store in the Key Vault. But what we need to understand is, when we say about the features, so Key Vault is not designed to store the username and passwords. It means the login detail of the user. We are not going to use Key Vault for storing this information. We are going to use Key Vault for storing the information for the connection request, connection strings which we are designing, our keys, secrets, and the certificates. So the identity detail and the other thing that we are not going to store in the Key Vault. Key Vault is specifically designed to keep your secrets, keys, and the certificates. So that we need to understand and see. Like API keys, you can store the connection string, username, and passwords you can store in the secrets. That you can do. Also, we can have public and private SSL and TLS certificates, which I've shown you right now at the SDOR portal website. You can also check the certificates which are available in the other HTTPS websites. And you can identify that is this is secure or not. How the uh, transaction is happening is the secure transaction is happening with this or not. That you can check. Also, we can use and secure the hardware security modules protected key also. But for that, we need a premium license for accessing this, which is mentioned over here. And as I told you that this is not intended for storing the user login details. It is not for identity login details. This is only specific to the keys which we need to access certain applications, to access databases, or some secrets which we want to keep. And then also it comes with two tiers, standard and the premium. So here, if you see in the Azure key world, we have a place where we can play around and where we can create the information. So if I go to keyboard, because I have a limited time, I can create this keyboard. And here I want to show you that what all things I can create in keyboard. So if you see over here, I can select the resource group. Now, what is a resource group? This is a place where you are going to keep your resources. In this group, you can club the resources which are required for a specific project. And then you can assign this resource group to different users and you can work on that resource group as well. So here, this keyboard you want to assign or you want to attach with a specific resource group that you can select from here. And yes, you have to select a subscription also. As I told you that I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, I have a MSTN platform subscription which is given by Microsoft to me. I'm using that subscription. You can use the subscriptions which is available to you. And yes, you can create your free account on Microsoft for accessing these services, for practicing these services. Uh, you just have to create an account on your portal and then I think you will be having access for two months with some credits also, so that you can access. So here I'm going to use an existing resource group where I have resources. Now I want to give a keyword name I can select the name, I can select a reason and tiers. I'm not changing anything, I'm keeping it by default because I want to show you some other thing. So here, if you see, I have a recovery option. So what this recovery option is talking about is that we have a soft delete option. Means if you are not having a soft delete, the entire information will be deleted in one click. You will not be able to recall that information. You will not be able to reverse that information that will be permanently deleted. What you want to do is, you want to enable the soft delete so that you will have the option to keep your information for a limited time and you can also reverse or you can also recall the information. So here we have certain options which we can work on. So by default, soft delete is enabled just to protect you from the permanent deletion of the information which mistakenly can also be deleted. Then again, we can mention that how many days we want to relate uh, detail, the deleted walls as well. So that I can mention over here, by default it is 90 days. Then I can also have a purge protection. So in this, if you see, if you are enabling the purge protection, it means 
this is going to be an irreversible action. So here we can enable it and we can disable it as well. It is right now disabled because we can also have the option to work on the retention period as well. I'm going next and I want to show you the other things which will help you in understanding that why this is called as a safe locker in Hezbo. So here if you see, we have access configuration. So in cloud, it is important to see who is accessing which resource and who is accessing which application. In this application, how much uh, access we are giving to a specific user because in cloud, they are not only having users which are registered with your cloud, your team, but you will have users which are coming from external organization also, or which are coming from the on-prem also. In nowadays, users will be using their own devices to access the applications also. You have to be very, very particular when you are giving access to the users for your resources. So in that case, cloud service providers are always coming up with the solutions through which you can maintain and manage the access. Even you can give access based on the condition. If you want to access application A, you have to follow this rule. You have to come from the MFA, you have to reset your password, you have to provide your identity. There are a number of ways or your device should be compliant. So CSPs are giving us the facility to the customers so that they will have a secure access to their information. So here in eVault also, they are managing the permissions which we are giving to the users for access. We have a work access policy where we can determine that whether given a service principle or a, a user application or user group can perform the various operations on these secret and certificate. I will show you the operations as well. And also we have a, another access that is role-based access. So here we are giving fine-grained access of the Azure resources to grant access to a specific scope and the label by assigning the appropriate Azure role. So I will show you both the accesses, how we can work. Here we have other resources also which uh, we will grant access so that they can use the Azure keyword for accessing the key secret of certificate. So I'm not enabling any and I'm just Right now I'm creating with access policy. So here if you see when I'm creating an access policy, this is a by default access policy which is created now with this. I can work on this, I can create my own. If you see this access policy, here I am giving get, list, update, create, import, delete, these many key permissions I am giving to this user. Secret permissions, I also have a list I am giving it to the user and certificate permission I'm giving it to the user. You have an option to give all these permissions to the user by creating the keyword or you can assign these policies later also. So if you see the list of the permissions, I just wanted to show you that instead of going the policy which Microsoft is giving to you, you can create your own access policy because the flexibility is what customers need in the cloud environment. So today I'm taking an example of Azure. We have the flexibility to create an access policy. So if we see here, these are the key permissions which we have assigned, which we want to assign to the users. I can select that the get or list or update or these many things I want to give to this user for key. For secret, I want to give only two access like backup and restore and recover, that's it. I can also select that what all things I want to give for the certificate management. Here, I can work on the cryptographic operations. I can work also on the rotation policy. Now, that is also very, very important policy which is added now. In that, you can rotate your keys as well. If your keys expire, you can rotate your key so that you will have a new version of it. So, with the help of this, you can create your access policy and then you can assign it to the specific user. You can also work on the application and then you can create your access policy. So I'm not creating it right now. I'm just going to select the policy which is given for this user and I'm going to create this email. So all the information is coming over here. It is going to validate and then it is going to create this uh, email. So once it is created, we will come back to this.
and take you back to the slides. So if you see, this is showing about the keyword access. So for keyword access, users and applications are going to access the secret certificates keys which are stored in the keyword. Now, users and application, those are authenticated, will be only giving access to have access to the information stored in the keyword. But now, who is having access to which information that will be checked with the authorization. If this user is authorized to work with this keyword, then the user will be checked for the RBEC or for the access policy. So here, we can see that what kind of authorization we have given to the specific user. This user is authorized for management plane or this user is authorized for data plane as well. So here we have again an option to uh, see that what kind of permissions we are giving to the users. We can define a specific roles for accessing the keyword and management plane, we can give permissions to create and delete keyword we can give permissions to retrieve the keyword properties or update the access policies. And for the data plane specifically, we can work on the inside of the keyword, like a piece, a secrets, and certificates. So we can give permissions to access the uh, key secrets and uh, certificates stored in the keyword. So that we can manage with the help of keyword policy. Let me take you back. So my keyword is created now. I got the notification. I'm going to the resource right now to show you that what all things we have discussed is coming over here. So these are the three objects which we can store in keyword. We can store keys. Right now we don't have any key. I will create a key over here. We can only generate and import the key. We don't want anybody to read this key. So that's why we have only two options. I can generate or I can import this. I can restore the backup as well. Like if we have taken a backup of the keys, I can restore the backup. But the question is, can I restore that backup in any subscription in any keyword? No. If you have taken a backup from a specific subscription, from a specific keyword, you can only restore the information in that keyword. only. So that security is also given. I can give a name. Here I have key type. I can take the RSA, I can take the EC type of key also. Or I can also work on the size of the key. The bigger the size, I have more relaxed that the uh, break of the key is not possible. So I can select the size of the key also, which is specific to my application. And also a very important thing, the key activation. So we can define a activation date for that key and also the expiration of that key. And we can enable this key right now or we want to enable it later on. That also we can manage over here. And we can work on the key rotation policy also where I can define the expiry that this will be expired in how many number of days, months or years. I want to enable the auto rotation. What are the rotation options? All those things we can manage for the rotation policy when we are going to create a key. This is specifically for the key rotation so that I can work for managing this. Right now we have created keyword with the access policy. If I show you the secrets, I can also create the secrets. I want to have the secrets like I can say password SQL. I have the secret value. Because this is a secret which I am storing, I can see this secret which I have created right now. What is the content type I can specify over here? I can also set the activation date for my secret. And then I can enable it or disable it. I can so whatever information I have, I can create this information and then I have a certificate also. I will just show you this quickly and then we will move to the next thing. In the certificate also, you have an option to generate the certificate or import it. Let's say you have received it from some certifying authority. So if you see this information again, 
This certification is issued to portal.azure.com and issued by Microsoft Azure TLS Issuing Certifying Authority 05. So this is a certifying authority which is given the certificate. Now, if this is coming from the certifying authority, we have option to import it also. We can also specify the certifying authority. All this information we can specify. Subject, we can specify the certification. DNS, we can specify in the validity of the certification. So these things we can manage and specify in the certificate section. And the access policies I want to show you, that what all things. This was the uh, access policy which we have selected by default. I can edit it also. I have an option to change the permissions which I have given initially. Now I want to change these permissions. I have action. I have access to edit this because that role is assigned to me. And what role is assigned to me, I can go and check my access also. So if you see, I have a service administrator which is having full access to all the resources in the subscription. And because of that, I'm able to access it. I can again create other keywords and I can show you. But what I want to uh, show you one more time is a few things which I have in my slide. Quickly, we will finish it. So these are the things which I have already shared, how we can create keys, what kind of operations are there in the keys. I'm going next. Now, if you see this customer managed uh, keys, so in the customer managed key, if you see that here in this particular example, we are using the customer managed key where this user is first creating a storage account and enabling storage service encryption. In this, we have a wrap and unwrap of the keys and we are using hardware module keys. Now in this case, for encryption and decryption, we are using these keys and we are taking the help from keyboards. So entire thing will be managed with the help of key, but your key will not be sitting alone. Your key will not be isolated. Your key will be stored safely in a locker from where you can have access to that information. We have an option to work on these things, and it's very easy to work on these informations. Similarly, the secrets which we discussed, that we can create the secrets, we can give a name of the secret, and again, we have an option to change it from manual to other options as well. And we can have this rotation policy, which I was discussing with you. Like, uh, we have a key rotation policy in which an expiry event is generated. So we have created an expiry event that before a specified number of days, this event is going to trigger the event grip. And based on that, a new version of that key is going to be created or secret is going to be created. So that entire process can be managed with the help of key and secret rotations. So these are the things which I wanted to share with you. So in this portal, as we have created the uh, keyword, we can also create the keyword with the RBAC. Let me see if I have a few minutes. I have one minute only left. So let me quickly show you that RBAC option also. This is very, very important uh, concepts in the keyword because when we are using the applications, it is important for us to see that where we are storing our secrets and the information. So here, if you see, I'm going to select a role-based access control. So now if you see, we have a different option of giving access. So in next one minute, I'm going to close the stop. Yeah, it's going to be deployed in the process. If you have any questions, you can put in the chat or uh, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. If you have any question related to any uh, Microsoft Cloud Security Services, uh, Sentinel, Defender, IEM, any service, if you want to learn more, you can reach out to me. I'll be very happy to help you in your learning journey. Let me see. Yeah, it's created now. I just wanted to show you the difference. So if you are coming over here, I will create a key. Yeah, 
So if you see this operation is not allowed by RBAC, if role assignments were recently changed, we have to wait. If you have a role, then only you can create a key. So let me show you that. So here, if we have roles, then only we can access this information. So right now, access policies are not available. You have to go and you have to work on the access identity and access control only. Here I can go and add the role assignments and based on that only I can give the access to the information. Who can read, who can create, I can mention that and based on that I will be able to access the information. So this is what we can manage and we can work with the keyboard. And yes, whatever updates we are doing, whatever activities we are doing, we are getting the entire information on the logs. I just wanted to show you the logs. This is giving us the other thing. I can see the entire inside. We have option of workbook to see that what all activities, what all keyboards I have. So all those information I can check. From. So this is all from my side. And uh, if you have any questions, you can post it in the Q&A or you can reach out to me on the that's it from my side. Thank you everybody for joining and uh, listening my talk. I hope that you have a wonderful learning experience with us. Thank you.